Our friends at Intel Canada sent me out something incredibly funky and cool to check out. It is a computer that they built for me around the Intel Core i9-14900K chip, which is their 14th gen processor. It has AI functionality and capabilities put into it so the AI can manage sort of power distribution and how much you want to overclock this thing. There's all kinds of tinkering that you can do with its power distribution and its blazing fast speed. And then paired with with this ridiculously powerful processor. They also threw in some other killer components. So it's got an NVIDIA RTX 4090 card in there. It has an ASUS ROG Strix Z790A motherboard, 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM, and a Corsair IQ Link liquid cooler. And everything looks freaking amazing in this. It's a lot of glass panels around it. It's heavy as hell. It's giant so that air is going all the way through it. There's fans everywhere. And there's all kinds of colored sort of accents in here as well, which of course you can customize. And also you can dig into the BIOS and into all kinds of functionality within this device to adjust just how much power you want it to draw and how much you can push it to run things as fast as it possibly can. And there are a couple things here. First of all, I don't have an 8K television or a display. I don't have the most advanced visual componentry out there that this thing can power and I'm sure it's crazy. I'm sure you can get just flat out crazy frame rates on top end 8K screens and displays and stuff. So I don't have that. I've got an ultra wide display at 3440 by 1440, which is just beautiful and HDR lighting and all kinds of just gorgeousness come out of that. But it's not even a 4K display in its truest sense. It's really about having this wraparound kind of viewpoint on video games. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous, but it's not state-of-the-art top of the line in terms of what you can push to. And so I wasn't really pushing this machine to its fullest extent in terms of its visual outputs and in terms of its frame rates. The other thing is that this is a 165 hertz monitor, so the fastest a game is gonna run is 165 frames per second. And I had a lot of games that were running at that. I checked out a bunch of different titles. But the other thing, and I'm quite frank with Intel and whoever sends me me PC hardware to review or to take a look at. I don't really work on PCs. I don't like video encode or edit or do all kinds of intensive photoshopping or anything like that. I just use PCs and some of the handheld PCs and the other stuff that I test out to play games on. That's what I use the PC for. I do all of my editing and all of my production work on a Mac. And so I didn't want to artificially create this environment where I was just going to push a whole bunch of workload at this PC because I never do that. Even though this is an incredibly competent piece of machinery and it's going to export stuff super fast and you're going to be able to run around with 8K footage and do all kinds of stuff. But again, I don't have an 8K display that I was going to push that around on. So I really just focused on games and throwing as much software as possible at this, which means I was playing a bunch of games on this and I was playing everything at high or ultra high, sort of max out settings at 3440 by 1440 with vsync on and you know dlss at ultra performance you know everything to kind of just get this thing just cooking software wise and i was throwing some complex stuff things that have been plagued with performance issues like dragon's dogma 2 which absolutely looked incredible and ran better than i've ever seen it before and what i was experiencing again and again it was like the case with dragon's dogma 2 it's like i was experiencing these things for the first time again i didn't want to stop playing any of these they're all banger games and they were all running beautifully i took a look at star wars jedi survivor which had a horrible pc launch but this was running at 130 140 frames per second with everything maxed and i didn't even get into any of the overclocking settings or any anything i just sort of let it run off of the sort of core stuff and it was running amazing it was so hard to think about going back to playing something on the PlayStation 5 or the existing Alienware R12 PC that I've been testing stuff out on for a couple of years now. But those games ran beautifully. Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales, which is just a beautiful, exquisite looking game with all kinds of flashing electrical powers and stuff. And that's a game that looks amazing on whatever you throw it on, whether you play it on the Steam Deck or the Asus ROG Ally or on PlayStation 5, wherever you see it, it looks great. But man, I've 
never seen it look better than when I was playing it on this ultra wide display off of this PC. Stunning. Same with Helldivers 2, which there was a lot more kind of detail and nuance in the smoke on some of these planets and the uh, robots and stuff that were coming to get me with their glowing red eyes and stuff. Absolutely gorgeous and also blown away. Of course I would be. Of course I had to check out Cyberpunk 2077. I put the RTX on and there's a special DLSS RTX that's only for the 40 series cards. I had that cranked. And again, it looks incredible just seeing all the lights and the glow and the reflections of everything. It's so stunning. It's so indulgent to play games at this kind of spec, you know? These developers are just building incredible works of art and it feels kind of criminal that we don't have access to this all the time. But of course, when Intel sends me this, it's about sort of thinking, it's projecting. It's like where we're going, where we're getting to. And this incredible technology, it scales down and becomes more accessible to people and less expensive and becomes part of consoles and stuff as we move forward, which is really remarkable. But I just felt completely bathed in just gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. I'd never seen Suicide Squad look better than I did when I was playing it on this PC. Tekken 8 in ultra wide with these crazy, crazy moves and all of these flourishes and smoke in the background and all this beautiful detail that they put in. Incredible. The Last of Us Part 1 was a bear on PC. I had all kinds of struggles playing it on my PC and also on the Steam Deck, on the ROG Ally. It had crashes galore. I know they've been patching it like crazy. Well, guess what? It ran better than I've ever seen it before on this machine. And it's a staggering piece of work, even though it's based on old code and some of the, uh, you know, some of the elements we've seen around for a little bit to juice everything and to crank everything and to see the lighting and the details and characters' faces. Sublime. Really, really nice stuff. Again, also wonderful to play a little bit of Sifu and Ultra Wide. Manic and beautiful. Love that game. Returnal is a freaking masterpiece. And of course, I checked out Housemark's previous incredible twin stick shooter called Nex Machina. And I just had Bullet Hell Nirvana playing both of those games in Ultra Wide with incredible soundtracks and just all of this gorgeousness. And I think one of the most beautiful games that's out there for PC right now, and it ran incredibly well on this machine, and I'm talking it's even challenging Cyberpunk, it's Horizon Forbidden West, and they've got the complete edition, so Burning Shores is attached to this software as well. It's breathtaking. It's an absolutely gorgeous piece of software. And again, in ultra wide with just stunning frame rates and every kind of nuance and detail you can imagine in the environments and the grass and the bushes and stuff kind of swaying in the wind as Aloy is navigating through them and taking out some of the robot monsters and stuff. Stunning, incredible stuff. And yes, I'm happy to report that this Franken monster machine, this just killer thing, the, the, honestly the most impressive piece of technology I've ever had a chance to test out in, in EP's history and certainly in this basement. It is insane how powerful this thing is. And I had to test that by throwing Crisis at it. I threw on Crisis Remastered, instantly got hooked. Man, that game is so fun to play. I love the suit abilities and all the sort of functionality that you get, the sandbox qualities of everything. I mean, you just test out this system, you test out that system. It's almost analogous to what I was doing with this machine. I just kept throwing software at it, just seeing if we're going to have any hiccups or anything. And there were a couple of times where I had to calibrate the frame rate to go to the hertz on the monitors because the, the machine was pushing frame rates and you can see it in some of the, the statistics that I have up there. It's pushing theoretical frame rates that are kind of beyond what the monitor is capable of. So I had to kind of align it to 165 frames per second and then there were a little less stutters and jitters and cyberpunk across some of the neon signage and stuff like that. I noticed a couple of those little hiccups. Honestly, this is smooth as butter in terms of an experience experience. I'm so grateful that I had a chance to check this thing out and it's really impressive about what's coming down the pipeline for us because I don't think that this is, you know, unless you're a millionaire and and you have like a, your own arcade in your house, you know, with actual full-size machines and money is no object for the type of gaming that you do. This isn't really a serious contender or you know, you 
love to game at the highest caliber, but you do all of your work and you're creating 3D assets for a video game or you just need high-end, incredible PC architecture to be able to run that and you don't mind spending five, six thousand dollars on your rig, this is kind of out of touch for most people. I wouldn't myself look at that and go, yeah, I can justify that. But what's cool is we know that this will trickle down and we'll get all of this technology and games will never, never look better. Because I'm telling you, I was freaking blown away by this. So I did ask Intel Canada if I could keep it. Of course I did. They said no, put it in a box and send it back to us. So that's what I got to do now. But this Intel Core i9-14900K processor is legit. And all of the other components that they stacked in there for me took my breath away. What a blast to play these games. And man, we just don't have enough time, right? It's so cool to go back and play these bangers, these like best that the games industry creates and to see them like this. And then to realize, at least in my case, that I, I just can't stay in them. A, I gotta send this machine back, but also I gotta start playing some of the other new things that I gotta come back and review. But uh, I really enjoyed this process. It was a really fun, uh, you know, few days that I got to kind of live with this thing. So thank you, Intel Canada, and your baby is headed back your way, I promise. All right, you guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on this hardware in the comments below. We'll see you soon, and until then, play forever. <laughs>